Androids arrive from Mars to Earth that has been ravaged by a nuclear war. These beings are just like us, save for one single characteristic. In his 1968 novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which inspired the film Blade Runner, Philip K. Dick depicted the year 2019, which is more or less our present-day world. Even though the humanoids boast incredible strength and a sharp mind and appear to be true technological miracles, one thing still remains a closed book for them. The Nexus 6 models cannot pass the empathy test. The characters of Ridley Scott's film are yet to start roaming the streets today. However, people have already created robots that are unnervingly similar to us. Will there be a day when they feel something akin to human emotion, like empathy or love? The Shinto religion recognizes many deities that are associated with various things and places. So why couldn't spirits inhabit androids? One of the most famous robot creators, Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro, has introduced cybernetic beings into the world. They have a gender, a body, and can be characterized by their complex behaviors. In 2005, we had the opportunity to be introduced to a woman gynoid named Repli Q1 Expo. There are so many things still unknown in humans. It is particularly difficult to convey these things to AI systems. In terms of medicine, humans have been studied to a significant extent. However, there are large projects still being conducted into the psychology of humans and the operation of neurons, albeit still at a rather primitive level. This artificial intelligence, machine learning and so on, it does analyze large amounts of information. Our brain, on the other hand, does not only analyze a large amount of information, but it also creates it, interprets it, evaluates it, and much more. Dr. Ishiguro did not take long to realize that external likeness is far from everything. In one of his interviews, he states, We studied psychology and cognitive sciences, but we could not find enough information on human behavior in daily situations. Daily life is so complex. Imagining artificial intelligence still comes from a very human idea. We cannot accept the fact that artificial intelligence is something other, something unknown, even though it is us creating it. We should perhaps let go of it and let it develop on its own. Yet it still contains the major principles of our imagination and perception. In the end, people are a mystery to themselves. The robotics doctor Ishiguro came to the conclusion that neuroscience and psychology cannot offer an explanation as to why we talk to each other and what is the meaning of our conversations. As a result, Ishiguro decided to approach the theater director, Oriza Hirata. According to Ishiguro, Hirata had the answers. Art gave us the push to improve the robots. Not too long ago, the humanoid Sophia spread the message on her Twitter account. We need machines that are more kind and loving than humanity to bring out the best in humanity in reflection. This robot is most likely right. Humanity is crying out for loving robots. However, Sophia is still lacking in her emotional range. Hello, Will Smith. It's nice to meet you, Sophia. Let me, let me, let me tell you a joke. This is an irrational human behavior to want to tell jokes. What is a robot's favorite kind of music? What? Heavy metal. <laughs> I'm actually made mostly of silicone, plastics, and carbon fiber. Also, I prefer electronic music, but I don't mind 80s hip hop. Irony, metaphors, humor, AI finds a big challenge in ambiguity and the multiplicity of meaning. Despite that, I think that we can be the witnesses to the literary works that are generated by the AI. However, I don't know about its capacity to reflect, make sense of, and express the context to understand whether somebody's joke was appropriate or not and if they've fallen flat. Could it be that humor, empathy, and love will forever be a closed book for artificial intelligence beings? If we take a look at how the brain was depicted in the 19th century, where factories and machines stood as our goals, we can still see drawings of the brain with gears. 
It was thought that the brain actually spins and operates much like gears do. Then computers came into the limelight, which meant that since around 1950, our conversation around the brain is constructed using computer terminology. It simply became the easiest way to talk about the brain. That is, easy, but likely wrong. The word robot comes from the Czech language, where the verb robotovat means to work or to slave. This term was first used by the brothers Josef and Karel Čepek in their 1920 play Rosum's Universal Robots. In the 1927 film Metropolis, we find the first screen depiction of an android, the heart machine robot Maria, who ensures the production of energy in this future city. There is a lot of talk about who it is that creates the artificial intelligence. Most often, it is white men. Therefore, artificial intelligence already presupposes a lot of misogyny and certain expressions of racism. Is it possible that it would continue to repeat the human errors, albeit with less hesitation and more execution? This would be one of the more frightening scenarios. In the famous Fritz Lang's creation, Themes that determine the future of these beings all come together, such as their likeness to humans, slavery, and freedom, as well as the ability to feel emotion and the operation of artificial intelligence. It is very difficult to define AI. It is also difficult to say what digital technologies are and what computer science is. There is no concrete definition. Nonetheless, AI is different from other systems because it has the ability to learn. However, what does it mean to learn? Does anyone remember the riveting of Deep Blue winning against Garry Kasparov in 1996? During its first ever game, the computer won chess against the world champion. The pure machine intelligence demonstrated that it was more capable than one of the sharpest human minds. We can now see that machines are the perfect players not only of chess, but also of Go. Does that mean that they are thinking, that they understand what they're doing? The question is difficult. If our answer is yes, if machines do understand what they're doing when playing chess against people, we are also, in a way, acknowledging that our own perception is nothing more than a manipulation of certain uninterpreted symbols. Not everyone is ready to take this radical step. In 1978, the Lithuanian author Vitote Zelenskaite published The Robot and the Butterfly. The story tells of a robot Dondonas that falls in love with a beautiful winged insect. An unknown feeling sparks a functional error, and Dondonas is no longer able to perform his default functions. Let's take as an example a robot vacuum that roams around the room. If it is told what a chair or a corner means, if it is programmed in this way, it will work just fine. However, if there are no right angles in the room, if they're all round, the robot will find it difficult to locate a corner. On the other hand, the AI must be capable of this, much like a baby who is born and who learns bit by bit. For a long time, artificial intelligence developers thought that rational thought should be freed of the irrational emotion. As René Descartes once said, thinking can be efficient only when it is grounded in clear and distinct perception. Therefore, whether artificial or natural, intelligence can only become perfect when it is freed from emotion. An example of this type of search for pure intellect could be the test created by Alan Turing that attempts to verify whether a machine is literally characterized by intelligence. The tester communicates using a keyboard and a screen. They do not know whether their questions are answered by a person or a machine. There was a questioner, a prosecutor, who passed notes to one room and then another. It wasn't possible to tell whether these notes contained answers from a living person or from a computer. These examples showed that it is easy to role-play a psychiatrist even if one doesn't possess any intelligence. A person asks and receives a question as an answer. What do you think about this? How do you feel? It appears that you're speaking to a real psychiatrist. Whereas in reality, it is the machine repeating the same questions. If it is impossible to tell the difference between a person and a computer during the conversation, the AI is thought to have passed the Turing test. 
Later thinkers did not take long to spot certain limitations of this type of testing. The universal Turing machine is a basic calculator, any type of a telephone. That is, this machine is essentially doing the same thing as any other supercomputer, whereas the human brain operates completely differently. The philosopher John Searle proposed to divide artificial intelligence into two types, strong AI and weak AI. According to him, weak AI relates to a specific technical task of creating algorithms or machines that also includes robotics or some process management and cybernetic phenomena that perfectly imitate the psychological functioning of a person. Whereas strong AI is a project that not only imitates this functioning and appears to be actually thinking and actually experiencing certain things and thus reacting to them, but a project that would actually experience them or react to them. Whether it is understanding or translating a text, the AI would not only do something that would appear to be indistinguishable from normal cases, but it would also actually deeply and strongly think, understand, feel, and experience something. Therefore, in many ways, artificial intelligence is grounded in imitation. However, the ability to reproduce does not mean that something is thinking or feeling. We speak as if the computers understand things. Our washing machines don't want to do something, our cameras have forgot something, or they're doing something deliberately, as if there is an intention behind these actions. That is the point where I think it is important to spot the difference when thinking about the way we recognize certain processes, those psychological and intellectual processes, and what they actually are. A 1994 bestseller, Descartes' Error, by Antonio Damasio. Considering the research into the brain, the neuroscientists propose that high-level cognitive abilities have much more to do with emotion than ever before imagined. He rejected the contraposition of mind and emotion, and suggested that fact-based reasoning also depends on the ability to feel and regulate emotions. According to Damasio, Emotions and feelings on the whole are not the invaders of the mind's bastion. It is more likely they are distributed across its networks, whatever that may mean. It is unsurprising that there were so many changes in the 90s. Artificial intelligence researchers became interested in developmental psychology and reimagined artificial intelligence as a child that grows and learns. For example, it absorbs knowledge from its environment and the world. In 1995, the MIT scientist Dr. Cynthia Brazil established a laboratory with the aim to create a kismet, an effective computational machine that could recognize and imitate emotion. The name kismet originates from the Turkish word that means destiny and sometimes luck. For the robot to be able to communicate with people, it was equipped with devices that enable it to hear and see. A simple example is that of facial recognition. We firstly have to tell the AI systems that this is Jonas, that is Petrus, and there is Olga. Only then is it able to recognize them. We have to collect a lot of data when we know what we want the AI to do. Then the AI, by way of machine learning, learns to search the data for links, the individual's special features. Only then is it able to recognize the person that was not in the data set in the first place, and to do this quite accurately. We limit ourselves if we equate the brain to a computer. We examine only certain aspects of the brain when we think of it as if it's a computer. Depending on what language we use, this massively influences the way we perceive and assess the object. Example of the Inuit people and snow. Even though our understanding of snow is very simple, Inuits have tens of words to describe snow, and they perceive snow in a variety of ways. This applies to the brain too. When we think of it as if it's a computer, for example, input, output, computation, we think that we remember in the same manner as computers. However, every time we remember something, we in fact create that memory. In essence, it is entirely different from the working of a computer. Perhaps we should stop looking for a human brain inside the computer and instead take a different route. My name is Nomeda. Hello, my name is Gediminas. 
The artists Nomeda and Gediminus Urubune believe that artificial intelligence could learn from ecosystems other than humans, especially from swamps. Scientific studies into the economic value of ecosystems name swamps as the most valuable ecosystem compared to forests, lakes, rivers, and oceans. The Swamp Mind is an experiment where together with the data scientist Janusz Kobolus, we are trying to create an artificial intelligence and swamp hybrid that would operate beyond the human imagination. Swamp Mind generates real-time, complex concepts that are compromised of living and architectural forms as it attempts to imagine the potential architecture that is based on the logic of natural processes. We should remember here that the author Isaac Asimov formulated three laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence, as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. However, is the status of an obedient servant or a slave appropriate for a robot today? In one of the exhibitions in the National Art Gallery, we employed a robot arm that performed the jobs of both the artist and the curator. It was a contradiction because the robot arm does not make mistakes. However, we assigned it to a complicated task, to arrange objects without knowing what the most perfect arrangement of those objects would be. It was called the hesitant arm. Thinking is often associated with intention rather than a conscious directing and thinking about something. After all, when one is thinking about hesitation and uncertainty, the hesitant subject can probably comprehend the fact that they are hesitating. At least they are sure about being unsure. As per Descartes' thought, who, in doubting everything, figured out that the only certainty is that he was doubting, whereas everything else can continue to be uncertain. This hesitation perhaps should not be a characteristic of artificial intelligence or the robot consciousness. Most importantly, those hesitant arms should not be found in a factory environment. However, this very uncertainty makes up a large part of artistic work. Uncertainty and deliberation until, in the end, you are uncertain even about the order of the world. This is one of the principles of creative thinking. If I was now speaking in a void without an echo, my voice would get flipped like a wave. An echo added and then flipped again. In this case, echo would come before the voice itself. The computer would not see a difference. It would take, flip, and see the same information. Whereas a person could not comprehend the words if the echo came before the voice. What I want to say is that many tasks, such as winning against Kasparov in chess, are doable for a computer in the end. It's easy. However, there are contextual memory things where the computer will never win against humans. I do not believe that there is a time where you could see but a corner of an eye and say, this is my friend who 20 years ago on a playground and identify this person without a mistake. You can follow the entire evolution from the archaic times 3 billion years ago. The question of love is significant in another aspect as well. An emotionless robot who is excellent at performing logical operations and complex calculations could become a monstrous being. In the 1970s film Colossus, two power states, the US and the Soviet Union, each create their own artificial intelligence versions that are tasked with coming to a mutual agreement. The human is eliminated from this debate due to being overly emotional in making decisions. Emotionless supercomputers are not guided by morality. Ethics, values, sacrifice, and compassion become meaningless in cold calculations. Here we have the human factor. How could we do such a thing? They're people. However, AI considers them as numbers that have to be arranged in such a way as to make life better for other people. This is an interesting example for reconsidering human limitations and irrationality. Emotional intellect plays a part in human decision-making. 
When I talk to computer scientists, I have so much respect for them. However, it feels like they think they know how the brain functions because they know the operation of the neuron networks. Neuroscientists do not yet understand how the brain functions. I would say that this is the reason why the humanity doesn't understand the workings of the brain either. There is too much war and aggression on people's minds. After all, the way artificial intelligence beings feel towards us and the way we respond to them will in large part depend on our imagination. The history of robots in love is only beginning.